everybody. This is Dee Reinhardt with Illinois WorkNet. Today on the call with me, I have Olivia Grisham. We do not have um, Tammy with us today. She had a meeting come up at the last minute, but we are going to cover a couple of things on her behalf. So let's get rolling right away with the dashboard information. Olivia, would you like to share your screen and Hi, sure would. start talking about your goodies? Yep. So let me get this popped open here. We're just quickly going to run through the enrolled dashboard, and we're also going to um, look at the ISEP dashboard. And then I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. Um, I had a couple of um, CBOs who did not get things cleaned up by this webinar, so we're going to pause the recording and kind of see where we're at and what needs done. Um, so we will start out here with our enrolled dashboard. Oh, good. So I was just have, going to ask you to do that. <laughs> um, so we have a couple of line items to go over on the enrolled dashboard. Our first line item is this referral pending 2151 pass due. We have three customers in there who um, need their 2151 uploaded so we know if they showed up to their appointment or not. And the second row is this referral accepted and enrollment started, enrollment required. We have 44 customers who have an uploaded 2151 with client services initiated, meaning they were accepted by the CBO, but they have yet to be enrolled in a training program. Customers need to be enrolled in a training program not long after they have been um, accepted by the CBO, so we're, we need to make sure we're saving that spot for them. So even if the training program doesn't start for another month or two, we need to make sure we're getting them enrolled right away, so that way we're saving a spot for them when it is time to start that training. And the second row is the CBO needs to upload past due. We have 71 customers still in this row, and we are at the end of the month, and this is supposed to be done between the first and the fifth. So if you have any of the customers in this row, if you have any numbers showing in your row on your dashboard, get them cleaned up as soon as possible or you're not going to have an upload for the month, which can result when monitoring happens, it can result in um, some findings if you're not doing what you're supposed to do according to the policy. So make sure that you're doing this every single month. Do not skip months and it needs to be done between the first and the fifth of every month, not not later, not a week or two later, between the first and the fifth. So make sure Kelsey, you're getting those numbers cleaned up. Kelsey as does have a question possible. about that. Kelsey's typing, but yeah. go ahead and talk, Olivia. I'll I'll break in when. Okay, and the last row on the enrollment dashboard is this completion status. Completion documentation needs uploaded. We have uh, three customers who need uh, the completion documentation finished. All right, so Kelsey's saying that if you enroll somebody on 4-12-2017, it shows up that their 2151A is late. You are supposed to be uploading a 2151A with their planned activities. So the process is 2151, saying that they, they got there, enroll them, and a 2151A that has, all right, they're going to do this many hours in job retention, they're going to do this many hours in work experience, they're going to do this many hours in um, ABE, they're going to do this many hours in uh, job search readiness. So that's the initial one, yes. We all agree it's just a guess unless you know exactly how many hours your program is. So, for example, I was at one of the offices. They knew exactly how long their program was. So they could put that in for the training. I have had it where we get a new intake on the 28th of the month. I upload the initial. Then the next due, it will show up as past due. If it's past the 5th, yes. So for the... If you have them start on the 28th of the month, they will have three hours maybe or six hours or depending on what days of the week were still there, they would still have some activity for that previous month. So then you still need to do a 2151. Unfortunately, you're doing 2151As back to back for those people that start late in the month. Yes, it would need to be prior to the 5th.
correct. Correct. Eric just said he's done uploaded a form on the 30th and had to do the report on the 1st before. So my suggestion to my suggestion to you is that if you want to work them in advance. And I've suggested this to Rockford on exact this exact process. If you want to work them in advance, download them, do all of the stuff that you have to do in them, make sure that it says for the month of whatever month you're working on the report for, and then wait until the first and just upload everything. So if you really need, if you have that many customers and you need to work ahead, just download them, work them, and then save them and just upload them all after the first of the month. But if you're doing that, make sure that, say you do them all on the 25th and say you're done and then on the 26th something happens with the customer that wasn't expected or they got fewer or more hours, those need to be updated before they're um, uploaded into Epic between the 1st and the 5th. So that's if you do them correct. early, that's great. Just make sure you're updating them to reflect the entire month, those last couple of days that you didn't, you had it done before, before you get them uploaded. This is just a suggestion. You don't have to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and kind of go a little bit deeper into the enrolled dashboard now. Oh. Alrighty, so on the iStep dashboard, um, I'm just going to go through this briefly. It's the same same as last week. Um, you know, we have all these uh, these three statuses right here. Um, if you have a customer who does not need any personal development steps or any um, engagement in that area, you can go ahead and mark them as complete in that section um, in their time in their yeah status line. And um, so that way, when we go in and look, it doesn't look like you just haven't added anything. We know, okay, you've evaluated and assessed them in this area, and they are done. And once they complete all the steps in that area, you can also mark them as complete. Um, for the career planning section, same thing goes. Once they've finished it, you'll obviously mark them as complete. Um, but nobody should have no career planning steps. Um, all of our customers should have some type of career planning activities going on at some point in their engagement with you. Um, and so this no steps identified, that should be zero because everybody should have steps in there planned regardless of if they've started, completed, or they're actively doing it. Um, they're all going to need a step at some point. And then it looks like we have gotten quite a few more of our target occupations selected. We still are missing about 30% of our customers' target occupations. So if you can um, have customers in this row, go in and get them updated um, to reflect the goals they had set for themselves in their application or the training program or whatever they've expressed to you as their goals for their target occupation. And then for the academic and technical training, um, there may be a few customers who are pre-employment only customers who do not do any um, academic or technical training, but the majority of our customers will have steps in here. Um, I know for sure 21% of our customers, that is not correct. We only have a very small percentage of customers in pre-employment only, so this number should be a lot lower. So if you have customers in there, go in there and get them marked with the epic step that they're going to be participating in, or if they're doing um, diesel or adult education, we just need to get those marked in there so we understand everybody's plans and where they're going. Do you guys we, have do have, we do have that worksheet that you can use so that if you aren't sure about what steps somebody needs to have, that you can use that worksheet to help you figure that out. At, at minimum, what you should be doing is going in and marking their target occupation and their um, target pathway. And I can show you when I demonstrate something else in the uh, ISTEP how to do that. 
The worksheet is not in the files below, but it is on the partner page, on the partner resources. I was going to show you where that was. I was just trying to find it as I was talking. It's kind of hard for me to do two things at once sometimes. Um, all right, so I will show you I will show you that in just a moment when Olivia is done. Um, I don't have anything else um, on the ISEP dashboard. As long as anybody doesn't have any questions, we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, just briefly mention, I know that a couple of our CBOs have had some um, new staff members come in, some old staff members leave, um, and I just wanted to make sure to remind everybody that on all of the customer's progress page, there um, is a DHS contact and a CBO contact. And if um, you have any changes in your staff at your office as it pertains to EPIC, just make sure you're getting your customer's progress page updated with the appropriate contact. That way you're getting all of the emails in your summary email. You're getting all the communication and case notes and everything you need for that customer. Um, so if you, like I said, if you have any staff changes, just make sure you're getting these updated to reflect who the contact is for the customer. And that's all I have. All right. So are you going to uh, – do you want to walk people through the I-STEP, or do you want me oh, to do yeah. that? It does not matter to me. I can do it since I already have my – I'll do it on test. All right. OK. Did Danny have any notes on that she wanted us to bring up? No, not on okay. that. OK. So um, I'm just going to quickly walk through the ISTEP, just a little um, refresher of what everything is and w how you can um, access it and everything. Um, this before first you page do that, Before you do that, can I show Eric where that handout is? Yeah. All right, I'm going to. Pull up my screen here real quick. In the in the um, Epic Partner Resources, under CBO for Initial Customer Intake Worksheet, there is a PDF that you can use. And I'm opening it up here. And I'm going to try and maximize this a little bit. This has all the dates, all the paperwork. It, this is just a worksheet. It's just a suggestion. You do not have to do this, but this will help you with the initial 2151A plan. If you know what your program hours are supposed to be, you can always put that in for the plan. And then we also have um, the different steps that you can put in on here for the personal development. You can just do a little check mark if you want to. That way, you kind of know what steps you need to add for your customers. So this worksheet is available to you, and then you can just go forward, go forth and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Olivia. All righty. So um, this first page is just the customer's timeline of their ISTEP. It shows you their goals. So when you go in and you enter their career pathway choice and target occupation, you can easily refer back to that on this timeline page. Their wage goals, short-term short -term and long-term goals, and the um, training program that they're enrolled in. And then we also have their accomplishments. You can click on these links, and it will show, them, show you the different credentials that they have earned and the services that they are in. And then we have a timeline checklist. It is just a small overview of what steps the customer is working in. I'm in test, by the way, so mine might be a little bit different than what you're used to because it's all test material and information. Um, and this is just kind of like a quick, easy view to see where, what they all have in there. You cannot edit or do anything on this page, but you can get a little view. And then we have the plan update history. It just shows you the customer's um, history of their ISTEP. So anytime anything was added, deleted, edited, anything like that. So, and then we have our three um, sections next. So we have this personal development section, which we have the timeline and status. And this is where you will mark them as on track, off track, or complete. 
and then you will update that. And we also have the review information section, which is different for each of our tabs. For the personal development tab, it, it will show you a list of um, the different um, barriers the customers have um, notif or selected in their application. So each of these were checked by the customer when filling out the EPIC application. So you guys can get a quick view of maybe potential barriers you need to work with them with or that they may need steps to help them overcome. And then the recommended ne next steps section is where you come in and you can add um, the different steps to your customer's page that they need. Once a step has been added, and it is like this on every tab, we have the edit and delete button. You can go in and edit it, and you can add more information, whether they have started it, completed it, if you need to delete that step, or maybe they unsuccessfully completed it. You can keep it as not started. Um, go in and add the steps, kind of their plan, mimicking what you um, put in that 2151A initial upload. And then you can put the date you're planning on them to start, which you can change at any time. And you can include a due date, but you don't have to. Um, sometimes it's kind of difficult to know when they may be done with something. But you can put like what the expected or preferred due date would be for that step. And then you can enter in credential information and um, dollar value and the service provided for that step. And he's going to go over that a little bit more when we talk about our updates. And then the career planning section, just the same with the timeline and status. You can do on track, off track, or complete. Um, the review information here is looking more at their um, employment information and goals. So you can, this is where you'll come in and edit it to select their target pathway and target occupation. And this is where you can put in all of their information on their goals and um, their goals for employment. And then again, they have the Add Next Steps, where you come in to add your next steps. And you can edit and delete those just the same as the personal development steps. And finally, our Academic and Technical Skills tab, same timeline status. Um, this Review Information section here is going to show you um, their um, academic information from the application, so the highest level of education they completed. And then if they have done NACSI, their NACSI scores will also be present here for you. And then this is where you can also add additional steps based on their academic and technical skill um, services. <coughs> and you can add case notes to every single tab. And also at the bottom of our personal development, career planning, and academic and technical skills section, we have an upload files option. So um, you can upload like a copy of their resume, maybe certificates they have earned during their academic or technical skills, um, things of that nature. And then um, the highlights and notes tab um, will show you all just an overview of files and case notes by each tab. So you can quickly come in here and see any files you have uploaded or look at the case notes based on the three different sections in the ISTEP. So do you guys have any questions on the ISTEP? Because the ISTEP is very, very important. This is what we use to help determine what benchmarks are reached by the CBOs. So this is where we're looking to see, OK, did the customer do training with you guys? Um, what services? have they done with you, and then Tammy will use that when doing the financial side of things and seeing, um, doing the re whole reimbursement part of this. So it's really, really, really important that you're getting this I-step up to date and making sure you keep it current because it is reflecting what you guys are doing, and we want to make sure that it is all reflected and that we're not missing any pieces of information there. All righty. I don't see anybody typing anything. I don't either. All right, so I'm going to pull up my screen now. Uh, now, uh, Olivia talked oh. about a couple of things that um, you we're going to. You want to bring your screen, Andy? Yes. Um, Olivia covered just briefly, touched on a couple of things 
that aren't out into production yet, but will be. So that's a couple of the things that I want to show you right now. As she mentioned, when you edit a step, the new information, oh, I'm live, whoops. Uh, the new information that's going to take place is when you're doing uh, career planning steps or academic or the personal development, you will now have the ability to add a service provider. So if you add the service provider, you will have to fill in the required information. Uh, in many cases, you might not be the service provider. You might be sending them out to a community college or you might be sending them off to a drug rehab facility. Uh, whatever that is, that's what you would put in this information. Then. The dollar value is optional, but it's useful, especially if you're doing bus passes or car repairs or something like that, so that you want to keep track of those dollars that you're spending for customer, for each customer. This is not going to transfer to your financial documents. This is just for uh, information for the case workers who n know this stuff. So all of those dollars are still going to have to go through your fiscal agent to make sure that that information is there. When you add a credential, say this is successfully completed, then there's a start and an end date, and you can save it. Now, if it happens to be, I'm going to move, move to academic, and if there is a step here that this has been completed successfully, it will open up and ask you if there was a credential. When you enter the credential, you can pick what it was, copy of certificate, what uh, was it the occupational skills license, when was it obtained, what institution, and I've been using someplace community college, put in a description, and I'm not going to type too much there. Uh, when was the start date? If you know, you can put that in. Maybe it was the previous month or the previous five months. Was there a due date? It's not required. Any notes that you want to have. So you save that. Once you've saved it, scan and upload a file right here. And I'm just going to pick something here off of my computer. Put a description, and this maybe is the food handler certificate, and that gets uploaded, and it shows up here on the left-hand side, so that's a permanent record for that file. Uh, anybody can see that. So that's great information that you can add to the customer profile that will be useful for maybe you down the road or for us uh, in any situation. The other thing that we have added is workplace skills. And this is a new tab here, but it's pretty much the same information that you had been doing before. One of the things this is based on, um, does DHS have access to those uploaded documents? Um, DHS has access to the ISTEP, right, um, Olivia? Yes. So then, yes, they should have access to those uploaded documents. Okay, so then in the workplace skills, we have uh, where we're putting in work experience. And this is um, just a, some people call it WEX, some place call it workplace. Um, whatever this is, is when you are the employer of record. You as the CBO, not the permanent employment, only you as the employer of record. So it's the work experience that they're doing. You can review their employment history if they have any. So if you put them in more than one work experience, you can track that here. Um, we're going to have to double check this because it comes out of the work experience. It, it's fed by the work experience that is already in your um, agency file, 
So you're, you probably will not have to re-add it, but this is where you could come to in addition to adding it from your agency location. Okay, then what you would do, and, and you'll see this here right away, if I go to add a new workplace, so this is answering Eric's question, right, he was segueing for me. So if I go to add a work-based learning or a job placement, it takes me out to the other screen for the worksite placement information. And all I have to do is then add customers. And it gives me the list of customers that I can add. And it will, now I forgot who I was on, but it wasn't, it, we're working on getting the list to, to work properly. That's why it's still not out in production yet. But you would add the customer, and it would show up um, here, the information, what their hourly wage is, what their position is. Is it full-time or part-time? Is it open? What date did they start? And you can backdate on these. You cannot po uh, post-date, meaning you, it has to be something that has already started or starting today. It can't, have, can't be starting in the future. And then you add this. Then when you do your payroll update here, what that will do is show up on the customer file where I just was. Now, unfortunately, my test person was not working properly, so I, I have to apologize for that not showing. But it will show up right here underneath the employer name and date. And then once you enter any payroll, it will show up under the payroll section that has been uploaded as well. And you can add payroll here. So if you only have work experience is unsubsidized employment. No, I'm sorry. Work experience is subsidized employment. So unsubsidized employment is the permanent placement where you start getting the 90-day retention measurements. OK. Um, all righty. Um, that is the workplace skills. The other thing that I wanted to show you is we are working on the customer view for the I-STEP. So now I'm going to open up a different window, and I'm logging in as Mary Blige. So I put in her username and password, and this is taking me to Mary Blige's account, but it's taking me to her Epic account. So what I will be able to do through Epic on the customer view is see the application and all the information that was entered by me as the customer on the application, and then I can go to my I-STEP, and I can see what has been entered for me on my I-STEP and where I am in that process. So it has no provider entered. That means that the provider wasn't supplied into the list yet, even though it was successfully completed. We can go back and do some of these things if you have the time to fill in the provider information. Um, but right now, moving forward, we would just like for you to try to get all of that filled in. The other option that happens now is if the customer prints this, you can uh, print, and I'm going to print this to a PDF so that you guys can see it. And it's printing right now. I'm, I apologize. I should have had this already up and going for you. But here it comes right now. What this does is when you print this, this will print to a printer. Or you can print it just like I did to save it as a PDF if you have that kind of software capabilities on your computers. But it will tell you a copy of your individualized iStep is available in your Illinois WorkNet account. Go to log into your account, select my dashboard, select Epic to see your Epic step and related information. 
you can provide them their password, and if you need to, you can reset their password for them. It shows you their goals, the credentials that they have earned, and some of this may be something that they've already entered from their application, or it might be something that you just put them through for training. It will show the timeline checklist along with all of that information that we had showing on the screen there, and it will show the first page of the steps that were added uh, sequentially in order, and then it gives you the ability to have that customer sign off on that plan. So if you set up the plan for that customer, then they can go in and sign off on this, and this will serve as a 2839 for the DHS staffings, which is their plan. Kelsey's asking, are they able to edit goals and contact information? Let me go back to the application. It looks like they cannot edit their application information. But you are able to edit their uh, name, address, phone number, and email from their, um, correct, they could just look at their application, and they can just look at their goals. Uh, moving forward, we're working on trying to get any uh, customer able approved goals to be able to be approved by the customer. And it would be maybe something like completion of X thing. And that's saying that they provide proof and then they can sign off on that. Um, we're just happy that we've gotten this far with the I-Step view for the, for the customers. So um, I forgot where I was. Uh, on the customer profile, let me go back to that, for their address, all you have to do is go to their profile, and under their profile details, you can change their address, email, phone number, zip code, all of that kind of stuff. When uh, we have to get this put into production, Mary Beth, so we're hoping that by the uh, end of next, well, by the beginning of next week, we'll have this um, customer view up. But I'm going to tell you by middle to end of next week. Every time you meet with them, they, they can sign off on one. That would be great to have that plan updated on a monthly basis for staffings. And this is part of that staffing package that we're trying to put together for everybody. Um, OK. Um, next thing on the agenda, we're going to talk about staffing. We're going to be sending out a survey to talk about staffing. I know there's been some challenges getting some of them scheduled, but we are going to be sending out a pretty in-depth survey that we would like all of you to complete for us. I would have thought that you would have scheduled May when you finished up your April staffing, so that's not surprising to me. That way, then, you can make it work for your schedule. One of the things that we're going to be doing now, not yet. The packets are not ready. We're hoping to have those ready uh, in EPIC by May 1st. We've given our programmer a deadline of May 1st to have all of the packets ready to go. And then DHS can go into the system and get those. We will alert you by notification when those when everything is ready. Hopefully, they are all ready for the staffing that you do in May for the April activities. Okay, customers who 
come to you already employed and not wanting to participate are going to be rejected back to DHS. Kelsey, what do you mean by not done? Yeah, don't fight that. Don't fight the fact that they did you by phone instead of in person. <laughs> we're, our goal is to have everything done by phone, but we're getting pushback from DHS on that. Um, okay, the retention only, back to that, the retention only is if they, so that option is no longer available when you do an enrollment for a customer. So on the progress page, we have taken away the option for you to uh, enroll somebody by retention only. Now the language has become pre-employment services only. Retention only has been taken away. Those customers are to be rejected if they come to you employed and do not want to participate. They may be underemployed, but that's their decision to do that. If they can still participate in your program and have a part-time job, please take them in with open arms and get them into a career pathway so that they don't have to have three jobs. Um, as I said, employment only is now called pre-employment only, and everything having to do with exit is now called completion. So completion status, completion information. If you're looking for exit, you won't find exit. You will see not completed successful completion or unsuccessful completion. Uh, additionally, we have two new pod offices, one in Skokie and one at West Suburban in Melrose Park. So the Skokie office is the northern office, and the Melrose Park office is the West Suburban office. Those should be up and running within the next week. Uh, they've been going through training so that they can make sure that they get everybody done in the right time and the right uh, manner. Additionally, we have all of the new instructions that have been updated since the last webinar that we had with you guys. They're all in the file pod or they are on the um, Epic Partner resource page. Mary asks, how many times is a customer allowed to reschedule a conciliation appointment? They get the 2846G with appointment date, call to reschedule the date, then call to reschedule again. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, it needs, first of all, it needs to be a good faith reason from that list of good faith reasons, and I would give them one chance to reschedule and then call DHS or send a case note that says this customer has tried to reschedule a second time and uh, call the primary contact if you're not getting good response. Um, we will find out for sure what they say, but I'm almost positive that they're not, they wouldn't allow that to keep happening. Does that answer your question, Mary, too? All right, and, and if it's something like they're saying they've got a doctor's appointment or whatever, make them bring you a doctor's note saying why, that they missed that appointment. Make them show proof, because that's, that's just, anyway, all right, I'm not going to finish my sentence. <laughs> All right, we have some information that Tammy wanted us to share with you. I have one more thing to add, though, before oh, we go sure. on. Um, one thing um, I did want to mention is that 
Um, customers cannot be rejected after they have been enrolled into your guys' um, organization. So if you've accepted them and enrolled them into a training program, you cannot turn around and reject them a couple months later. If that is the case, you need to do conciliation with the customer um, to resolve whatever issue came up for you rejecting them. Um, if the customer decides he wants to go to a different training program or an incident occurs and you no longer feel comfortable serving that customer, then you need to work with DHS to make sure it gets resolved right away and that the customer is handled and realigned with the CBO, a new CBO immediately because they've already been engaged and already have put so much time in with you. We don't want to waste time by making them go through the whole process. You guys need to reach out to DHS and work with them to help customers that you've already enrolled or engaged. So Kelsey just asked, like the customer decides they want a different CBO before money is spent. Right. If you've accepted or enrolled them, then you need to work with DHS to get them realigned. You need to let DHS know they're coming back for an appointment to discuss this, discuss a different training program. But we can't reject them once they have been enrolled. Um, if they're Kelsey, if they're not responding, copy us, and we'll go up their chain of command. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, please set up a procedure so we can make our best faith efforts. I'm not quite sure. Kelsey's a typeaholic. She just wants to talk. All right, I'll call you after the webinar. Um, okay. Um, Olivia, do you want to go over this information that Tammy? Um, yeah, let me find it's it. It's in the, it's I in haven't. the file, it's in the, it's in that pod. Okay. Okay, so Tammy wanted us to let you all know that the department grantee report is due May 1st. Um, she sent an email on 414 at 918. Um, with instructions on completing that report. They must, um, you guys need to submit the G DGR for activities through March 31st, 2017. Um, the trial balance report that identifies all cash and costs through 3-31-2017. And a crosswalk, if we can't tie those cost reports in the GRS with the cost reports of the trial balance. So the performance numbers that you guys enter on the DGR need to be what you think um, they are on enrolled in training, completed training, employed, and retained. The instructions in the email stated that we will um, do a performance comparison. The performance measure numbers that you enter in the GGR will be compared to the CBO benchmark report in WorkNet to determine if um, they correlate. If the numbers are different, the EPIC team will work with you to determine if the services you have been reported in the customer's ISTEP and WorkNet are correct or if we need to make any updates to that to get it on top. And um, yeah, so the intent is just to make sure that the actual services are accurately reported. Um, the retention numbers and the CBO benchmark report, um, that last bottom row, retention only, that was specifically there for retention only customers. Um, but since we have sent them all back to DHS and removed that as an enrollment option, that number is obviously going to be zero. It is not looking at the customers you have retained after getting them a job. It was looking at the customers who had a job before they came to you. So we're going to update that row to reflect the total customers retained that have completed the 90-day um, follow-up period. So that row right there, you don't need to do anything with this time on the CBO benchmark report. 
All right. And if you guys have any questions related to the GGR, you can give Tammy a call. Um, and she also wanted us to let you know um, that uh, we need the CBOs that indicated they could attend the Friday 28th training to identify who will be coming. If we don't have a full house, you can um, op we'll open that up to more um, CBOs attending. And we had um, we had Phalanx, Asian Human Services, CAPS, CARA Institutal, National ABLE, OAI, and Central State Steers and Jane Adams had all said that they wanted to come on the 28th. I have heard back from a couple people. If you originally were going to come on the 28th but can't now, we do have some spots available on the 12th which will be at a safe haven. And, okay, inspiration, I believe you're now, you've contacted us and told us you're coming to one of them, and North Lawndale's not on the call, but um, we will be in touch with them. And then for Springfield, we will get in touch with you guys uh, so that we can figure out a date and a time that will work for everybody for the Springfield training. All right, do we have anything else left on here? Olivia, yeah. did you put yourself yeah. on mute? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm back. Okay. So um, the other thing Tammy wanted us to let you know is that there has been a revision on the supportive services, and the maximum um, amount has been raised to 1,000. It was originally at 500. Um, Tammy said that she will modify, work with you guys to modify your agreements in the future, but in the meantime, she's going to send out an email indicating that it has been approved. Um, also, she wanted us to make sure you guys knew that we um, paid work experience is not being utilized to its maximum potential. So definitely try to get customers in paid work experience um, opportunities that are being offered by the SNAP customers. It is a huge benefit to the customers, and it really sets us apart from the traditional SNAP ENT programs being offered. Um, so make sure you are getting those customers in there, she says. This could make or break us along with the quality of career and technical training. Um, so we really need to make sure we're utilizing work experience as much as possible. Um, getting those customers enrolled in that is very important. And if you did not include paid work experience on your original proposal, talk to Tammy about adding it in a modification because it, it really is great for these customers, and it doesn't count against their SNAP benefits unless you fill out the paperwork incorrectly, which we had to correct on a couple people. Go ahead. And finally, last thing um, we have here is that we um, have a few agencies that are really heavy in their career navigation expenditures and do not have significant expenditures and paid work experience and training. Um, just remember this is an academic and industry um, training program, um, so we really need to make sure that we're getting those customers in the paid work experience and in the training program. Um, it is not, this program is not designed solely to do job readiness or job search. The intent of the program is that work experience and getting them training they need to help them get a career that they can continue to grow in. So we don't want to just be focusing on getting them a job. We really want to make sure that we're helping them find a career pathway that will be able to support them and keep them growing and achieving all that they can. All right. So we'll make sure that all of that gets included into the notes. The other thing is we sent out a message this morning about this webinar that is coming up on Friday, and here's the information about it. If you uh, did not read that, this is a new program that DHS is going to be offering. So it might be worth it for you to sit through this webinar. We will 
see if they're going to record it. For those of you who are going to be attending the in-person training, uh, we'll try to make sure that we get a recording of this so that we can post it and share it out for you. And our next webinar is on May 10th. All right, so do we have anything else for the good of the cause that we need to talk about? All right, then I'm going to end our recording and wish everybody a wonderful Wednesday afternoon. And we'll see some of you on